Okay, we're back with another Ask Skill Builder. We're going to get straight into it. And Brian has sent us some really nice looking bathroom pictures and everything looks great up until you get to this one here. It looks like he's dropped a bowling ball on that. What do you make of that, Rog? <laughs> yeah. I've got to say, that's, that's a severe <laughs> crack, isn't it? That's not repairable with a bit of glue, is it, really? Well, you might say it was irreparable, mightn't you? When that happens, I had that crack shower tray. The thing about that was a long tray and, it, and, it, and the waste was in the middle. So the tray is thinning towards the middle and it just broke its back, if you like. It just broke right down the weakest point and um, snapped in half. And luckily I hadn't tiled up, so I was able to take the thing out, put in a completely different tray, even though the manufacturer said they'd give me another tray. I said, no, I really don't want to risk that. But put all the, the, the tiles in the shower screen and then finally got a broken tray. Nothing worse. Poor old Brian, what's happened here is that first time he went in there to take a shower the very first time the waist broke you know the whole thing's just fractured all the way around so terrible because that means all the tiling's got to come out he's got to take the shower screen out got to get it replaced so he got onto the manufacturers because this has got a lifetime guarantee but yeah but whose lifetime is it guaranteed <laughs> over this is a sad maiden voyage tale isn't it yeah a, yeah, a titanic, titanic problem it is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's not joke about Titanic. Is Brian a, a a big unit like the Titanic? First thing he said, when he phoned the manufacturer up and he said, look, my tray's broken. First time that it's broken. Round the waist, it's all cracked. You can see where it's cracked. They said to him, did you stand on the waist? And he said, yeah, well, I might have done. I went in this only an 800 by 800 shower tray. He, he trod on it. So they had said to him, oh, well, that's it then. Game over. If you trod on it, not covered. My son used to work for an insurance company, and that's what he used to have to say all day long not covered standing on the waist is not covered under your lifetime guarantee you think that in the packaging it would say caution do not yeah. stand on this yeah. so i said to him do you want me to get on to the manufacturer have a chat with a manufacturer and, and tell them that we're going to be making this video and get a response from them you know so that's what i did and surprise surprise they caught back straight away and had a very nice conversation with the fella the, the head of the company who designed the tray. He was the man responsible for designing the tray. A tray that you can't stand on the waist is a bit of a problem because if you put that into an Airbnb, you put that into someone, you've got guests coming around to your house and you say to them, oh, if you're taking a shower, by the way, don't stand on the waist bit. Don't stand around the plug hole. Avoid it. Step lightly through there. Ship it with some some of those pigeon strips, couldn't they? <laughs> exactly, with the polycarbonate flock off, yeah. So, so I thought, that's ridiculous, isn't it? You can't do that unless you, you know, warning signs on the wall, do not stand on the waist. It's just not going to work. But anyway, the, the fellow who who phoned me from the company, he said they should never have said you can't stand on the waist because those wastes are tested for 300 kilos, at least 300 kilos. If you imagine a 300 kilo person, I said, okay, so what's happened in this case then? Because he only just walked in there and the thing broke. And he said, I think what he's done, the plumber's done, he's over tightened the waist. These wastes, they're what they call a vortex waste. They're, they've got a flow, they kind of suck the water out. You know when the water goes down the plug hole, you get that vortex and it sucks the water out. They've got that kind of thing going for them because they have to deal with a lot of water. It's a very shallow tray. They need to move that water out of that tray very quickly. So what they do is they have this special waste there, which is like it's like a weir, if you like. It cascades over the edge of it and down it goes and very effective. But the only trouble is because of the design of it, they've just got those two screws either side and you have to tighten the waist you put the rubber seal on the bottom and you do put the screws in and you just tighten the screws up. Now, they don't talk about torque measurements as with some of the other bathrooms that we've done where they say you must torque these up to one newton meter. So you get your little torque wrench out, screwdriver out and you torque them up very precisely. They don't say that. What they say is hand tighten them, just, just get them in there so that the thing is sitting nice and, and flush and level and there's no gap around it and then give it, I think it talks about one turn it may talk about one and a half turn turns but it's very very specific on those instructions how much you have to give it so he said well the plumber must have over tightened it because if you over tighten it it will cause a stress it will cause it cause point loads on that that waste and it will crack it he said we've gone to all kinds of trouble to tell people not to over tighten it, it sounds to me like you ought to redesign the waste really is it a fairly new product no it, the one thing they don't say to you is if you over tighten this waist, you will break the tray and show you a picture of a broken tray. They don't say that. They just tell you, you must not over tighten it. 
but they don't tell you why people generally want to be able to tighten their waist down. Now, I don't use those waists because I just don't like them. I use the McAlpine waist. Fitting goes inside the, the waist itself and you tighten it down and you get a very even pressure all the way around it. And I've never had any trouble with the McAlpine, so I don't trust those two screws because when I look at it as an engineering concept, you've got a screw at, say, if it's a clock, you know, it's a circle, you've got one screw at six and you've got one screw at 12 and you're trying to keep the waist tight against the thing. So if you imagine three o'clock and nine o'clock on that circle, you've got areas where they're not screwed up, if you like, where you're relying on the six and the 12, if I can say this, this clock analogy. You're following me, Dylan. You know, like a, yeah, a good clock analogy. Yeah, yeah, well, TikTok. <laughs> you, yeah, anyway, that's right. You see what I'm saying? That you've got two points of, of where you're tightening it and you're expecting the edges to just kind of come up. The waist is sealed by that rubber washer underneath. You need that to be nice and tight against the bottom. And I can understand him saying not over tight. So anyway, I got back on to Brian and I said, Brian, look, he's saying that your plumber over tightened the waist. He said, well, I find that difficult to believe. And he described this plumber to me, told me about this plumber, about how diligent this guy is and how, you know, he's known him for 40 odd years. And he said, this guy is so anal, you wouldn't believe it. In fact, so anal that he just took the screws, tightened them as much as they're supposed to be tightened, the hand tight, and then he marked them with a felt tip pen so that he could count extra turn exactly and that's what he did so he said there was no way that he was over tightening that waist it just wasn't happening so and i said to him look the guy's fairly adamant that this this fellow this plumber has not over tightened your waist so diligent he said look they make such a fuss over not tightening these waists he said that i didn't over tighten it and he's used the trays before he's actually a fan of the trays believe it or not they in the meantime had replaced the tray they got a new tray and they fitted it. What do you think they fitted it with? What do you think they chose as a replacement tray? He what chose the for? same brand. He did, yeah. <laughs> he, he went out, so, so you buy a tray, it breaks. The manufacturer gives you a hard time over it and says, oh, it must be your fault. And you go and buy another tray and you buy the self-same. It wasn't exactly the same design, but he, he looked at the design of this other tray and he thought, okay, that waist is slightly bigger it covers a better area, I'll go for that. So he fitted that. He put the new tray in and I went back to the manufacturer and I said to them, really, you know, he didn't over tighten that. There's, there's something going on there. The manufacturer said, look, we're going to give him a refund on it. They're going to make that's it right. right. Yeah, they're going to make it right. So do you know what? And it's, it's, but, but this is a fight, isn't there? That's the yeah. trouble. Isn't I'm amazed at how many companies who have the resources to very quickly and easily resolve things like this and they don't do it. Well, I mean, we had a similar thing with Julex, didn't we? In, in, you know, very early on there was bad response bad, bad customer service from them and then of course we got involved and then suddenly they they were you know all over it so it, unfortunately it is the same thing that's happening but you know the, what does it cost that company it costs that company a trade basically there's a product which has got a lifetime guarantee it's failed for whatever reason and they've got to send out another trade as a replacement and that's kind of what i would have thought was the cheapest easiest way out for anybody to do that and i don't think it opens the floodgates if you'll excuse the pun i don't think you end up with loads and loads of trays most plumbers looking at this looking at this video will say well that's nothing the tray's nothing it means you've got to take the shower screen out you've got to take the tiles out the bottom you've got to get that new tray in and then you've got to retile put the shower screen back and all the rest of it so you're looking at well, it took this guy the plumber it took him two days to do it and he said to the customer, Brian, he said, look, I'm not going to charge you for this. He said, uh, you know, it's not your fault. He said, it's not my fault, but it's not your fault either. He said, so no. I'm going to swallow it. So Brian said, no, 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 you're not. He said, I'll pay you. I, I insist on paying you, which is great. When you've got a customer like that and you've got a plumber like that and they're both trying to be fair to each other, that's a fantastic thing, isn't it? <laughs> that they, that they, they both want to accommodate each other. But a lot of the time, I, I have this thing about the, the trade discount, you know, and when you go to a plumber's merchant, you buy the stuff and they give you 20% off and you put that on the customer's bill, that 20%, you don't give them the discount on that there. And they look at it sometimes because it's all transparent now. People can see prices on the internet and everything else. And they say, oh, well, I could have got it cheaper. So, well, you get it cheaper. You get it. You supply all the kit. But anything goes wrong with that kit and it has to be taken out, you're paying. I'm not paying. That's what my 
trade discount is for that 20 percent markup that i put on the on the goods is to cover me for these eventualities where something goes wrong and i have to come in there and put it right and that way i'm quite happy to come in there and change i've had to change baths in the past i've had to change shower valves all sorts of things in the past which as i say is a mission because you've got to take tiles off the wall and everything else but i'm willing to do it because I've got that markup. As soon as somebody says, I'm supplying all the kit, I'm going to bath store or wherever, I'm going to get all the kit, I say, okay, then you take the risk. And if it's a bit missing from there, or they've sent the wrong component, then the clock is ticking. You know, we're, we're, we're a taxi cab here. We're, I'm going to say to you, you replace it, you go down to the plumber's merchants, and you talk to them and you negotiate and get the part replaced. Anyway, this plumber was great. He, he you know, he was really honorable and they fitted the tray couple of days work and it's all hunky dory now and guess what this new one hasn't cracked so keep our fingers crossed there i went on a training course once at a very well-known company everybody's heard of this company i'm not going to say who they are for obvious reasons but while i was on the training course i was there with all the company reps they were all going in for a, a refresher and it transpired that this company whenever it got a claim on its products you know whenever there was a problem and they sent the reps out and they had a look at it they said it is never the fault of the product. And they said it's never the fault of the product because our production process, our monitoring, our machines are so well calibrated that we don't get variations. The product is absolutely consistent, 100% uniform all the way through the process, right to the point where it you know, gets to the merchant. So he said, we don't get problems with the product. What we get problems with is people putting it in wrongly, installers and all the rest of it. He said, but the important thing here is we authorize any of our reps to write a check for a thousand pounds, up to a thousand pounds, just like that. No questions asked. And he said, we do that not because we're acknowledging fault on, on behalf of the company, but because we want to keep that customer for the rest of their working life. He said, because once we've written that check for a thousand pounds and they go, do you know what? I could use other companies. There might be a cheaper product down the road. I remember those people doing the honourable thing. And, you know, that way they're buying the customer. But if you think about it, you know, although nobody wants to do that, just write checks willy-nilly for a thousand pounds. I'd be interested to know if they still do that, by the way. But anyway, it, it, it's an interesting lesson for me. I thought, well, yeah, that's it. You know, you've got a lifetime trade there. These guys are not just buying one. Like a plumber will buy loads and loads of shower trays throughout his, his working life. So... If you're the company that looks after that installer, then he's going to give you that repeat business all the time, isn't he? You see a lot of bad reviews about products and it'll say it arrived cracked. And you think, yeah, yeah. but that's not a reflection on the product. It just happened in that one instance. There are always those, those outlier cases that yeah. don't necessarily point to a bad product. Now, with so much stuff being delivered, obviously the COVID thing has made things a lot worse, but everybody is getting stuff sent to them. Everybody's got stuff coming through. And the couriers are absolutely overrun with work. You know, they can't, they can't handle it fast enough. They get more vans, more guys. They, they're not particularly well trained. They're just out there doing the job. And they're throwing that stuff around. And as more and more of it is, is turning up broken. And, of course, then that's a huge hassle because the couriers are going worse than the last didn't pack it properly. So there's all kinds of arguments going through. And, of course, we've also got this other problem. The environmental pressure now is on us to reduce packaging. So it's one of those things which is not squareable, if you like. You, you, you want to reduce the packaging. You want to do away with all that polythene and polystyrene and carbon and all the other things. And yet you're going to be sending it on a lorry with some bozo who's going to throw it around. You had an example of this, I remember, uh, with one of your jobs, didn't you? Where yeah, there was so much broken stuff in this shipment, not mentioning any names. I think they had a bit of a reputation for breaking things, but it was just looked like avoidable breakage just the way yeah. things were positioned probably about 40 percent of that shipment was, was damaged yeah we're in a bit of a bind with all this stuff that that chow tray could have been broken in transit couldn't it you know and uh but again what i'm saying is design it out make sure you've got a tray which is bomb proof and that one i fitted after my one broke in half i went and got a myra flight it was twice the price but i tell you what it is a bomb proof tray you could bounce something down like you know I've got, I've, people are getting heavier for sh for sure people are getting heavier but also i always think well maybe you want two people in the shower sometimes maybe that's the way you know people want to shower and 
shower with a friend. Why not? So you've got to allow for that when you're installing this stuff. Belt and braces. It's yeah. the stuff we've always said, the belt and braces approach and designing the problem out. So that's another little happy result. Anybody else who's got any problems, let's not, uh, let's not become watchdog here. But if you've got a problem, you need somebody to give you an opinion on it, a second opinion, then that's what we're here for. So as usual, we've got the link on the screen. And Roger, I think we've got a bit of a, a theme here because we had that issue with Dulux. We had a good outcome from that in that they changed yeah. their policy. And now we've got this story here with Brian and we've got a good outcome with the company replacing the tray. This is quite a good thing we're doing here, I think. Well, it is and it isn't. Let's, 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 let's say that we, we're happy to help people. We don't want to get into that situation where people are just thinking, oh, do you know what? If you don't give me a complete refund and a Rolls Royce and all the rest of it, I'm uh, I'm going to tell Skill Builder. So we don't want to get into that, do we? So we've got to kind of, we've got to strike a balance here. We're not the enemies of manufacturers. We're not the enemies of merchants, but bad service is bad service, I guess, isn't it? We can play the role of the moderator and yeah. get, everyth get everything in order. So yeah, I quite like that. We call ourselves the honest broker, should we? <laughs> I see you, Roger, as like the equalizer. Do you remember the equalizer? Edward Wood Woodward, yeah, I remember that. And lonely. Are you going to be lonely if I'm Edward Woodward? Are you going to be lonely? Oh, no, I didn't watch it enough to remember a character. Are you sure there's someone called Lonely in it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he was just called Lonely, and he was a very unpc really. Yeah, he's a victim. We got we got a gate crasher. He was he was a victim, and Edward Woodward was not very nice to him. <laughs> anyway. Ah oh, dear. Okay. Okay. Let's see up more skill builders coming up soon. Yeah. If you want to appear on our videos, you can. We love to see your face.